Okay, okay. I, I hate to stop this discussion, <laughs> but we got Quinn on here, and I don't want to lose him again. Okay, okay. okay if we could hold well, the question well, to that. Uh, Quinn, this is the Future Economy Council. I'm not sure where you can see them or not, but... Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you can see we've got a fairly uh, large group in here, and, and we've been talking about some of the concepts that uh, your company uh, does, and, and Mary has presented a, a very good presentation about what uh, is maybe moving forward in our county. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your company and what you do and uh, you know, how it relates to uh, sustainable farming and so forth? Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. morning. And since it's pretty here, I work out every morning, but it's still early to be <laughs> <laughs> uh, But uh, no, we, it's really uh, pretty simple. We're a design firm. We're landscape architects, land planners, civil engineers. And we uh, opened the firm, my wife and I owned the firm, and we opened it in 1997. We've always done pretty green stuff. Uh, and then about uh, 10 years ago, eight or 10 years ago, we had the opportunity uh, to have a gentleman came to us and had about 600 acres out here, which is pretty small out here. That's pretty sizable for you guys, I know. But uh, out here, that's a very small piece of land. But he didn't want to do a regular subdivision or a golf course or anything like that. And I said, oh, I got just the thing. And we had been working on it. My wife and I wrote a business plan for itinerant farming uh, when we were in grad school together. So that was the start of all that uh, And it was kind of just a, uh, an idea for kind of an amenity, to be really honest with you, when we first started out. And then about six months into that project, we both looked at each other one day. There was another guy that works for us. He's worked for us for 10, 15 years. And the three of us were in the room and we go, wow, this, this is how it's all going to work. There's jobs here. There's good food. There's all the things that people need. And we're designing the infrastructure to make it happen. And I, I overheard, uh, I think it was Mary talking about it. That's the problem is the infrastructure. You know, uh, farming and agriculture can't capitalize itself. Um, because of the margins, but you know, it's kind of funny because really we don't ask the if you open a jewelry store, we don't ask you to build the road in front of your jewelry store. The community does that <clears throat> through a variety of mechanisms. So the the opportunity came, and then it has literally just been growing at deep in the mountains. My first year was pretty rugged. I got laughed at two times. Whatever you know, oh, you're crazy. It'll never work. And now I'm on the national lecture circuit, and so the the reality is we're doing it for school districts. We're doing it for new developments, uh, but we've we've realized that if you build the infrastructure the right way, and it doesn't have to be terribly expensive, but it has to be it has to be focused. Um, then a lot of people will. I mean, there are tons. I get probably at least five serious emails or phone calls uh, a month for people that call me from all over the country now and say, hey, I guess you're the guy that's making farmers. And how do I do this? And what do I need to do? And what do I need to learn? And, you know, there's a whole, all the people that used to work for GM, actually all the people that used to work for the mills down there, and all the people, you know. And so it's a very Jeffersonian idea. They do other things while they're farming, but then super, you know, come and because we help with the supply chains and we, we work backwards from the market, I don't know if um, Mary kind of told you or Terry told you, but we have this thing we call the community food fraction, where we actually go in and we use GIS technology and a variety of things, and we calculate caloric need. We actually work on the market. We figure out, you know, how much land you really need for the, that many calories and how many farmers and a whole variety of things I think we're going to try and help help with down there a little bit but the the key is is that um, we are now starting to see like literally in the last few years um, I guess one thing I left out is about four years ago three and a half four years ago even as a design firm we saw the downturn coming and we said wow you know what we should be the farmers <laughs> so we actually started farming and uh, uh, that's a real uh, wow. But we, my wife came from a farm in Pennsylvania, and I grew up farming and ranching here, Colorado. But uh, that is the real key. Is like we 
have been developing how you really farm now, and how you sell direct, and how like we first started by selling to restaurants and institutions, and then now we have a website where people can buy and we actually deliver your groceries to you in a Prius. It's very interesting. It's, everybody loves it. So there's um, so there's a whole kind of set of you know different facets of the idea, but they all basically revolve around something that that's truly local. I mean, uh, we're, we're economists, so to speak, as well, and we spend a lot of time on demographic work and a variety of things. And I can tell you, there's not going to be a Dell factory in every little town in the country. It just isn't. Uh, if I was the guy who didn't where to put a Dell factory, the first thing I'd look at is food security, because I don't want to invest a million dollars in a plant, and then nobody's there to work for it because there's no way to get food to the people. So food security in schools, everybody knows that schools are the, you know, that's what's attractive to other industry. And if you can show and prove that, that your county or your region is food secure and has, has all that it needs to operate without, you know, that's not um, uh, kind of uh, tied to the price of a barrel of oil, um, you know, it's, that's going to be the next 25, 30 years of uh, at least how we envision the real economy will work. Things that really will localize will really localize. Things that they can't localize uh, will look for local economies that are really strong. So I think that's kind of like a summary. Does that make sense? I, I don't see it being fun. Thanks to you. Quint, one of the things you, you talked about in the, the last meeting I was present with it, is how your company is actually using some land in communities to uh, farm and produce, uh, for example, school properties and so forth. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. So we started out with in private development, and uh, that is uh, difficult because of the banking situation in the country. We have about four or 5,000 acres all over the country. We actually have one beautiful project in Salisbury, uh, but it's stuck. And it just, we even had 12 the lots sold and the farmer hired it, but uh, we couldn't get it built because it's stuck at the moment, uh, waiting to, for the bank to reload the money or finish it. But there's, um, so, so we look for other avenues, we look for other things, ways to do that, including smaller projects, really by well, looking at dozens of 40 and 50 acre projects where we're building um, the people that own the property and have the resources have a really nice house on it, but they build a, a farm kit, so to speak, uh, where the farmer can live. It's like a two or three bedroom apartment uh, that's in the barn. All to, you know, it all works together, uh, and they manage that. We call those steward lots, where the farmer. The, the economic opportunity is provided by the people that have the resource to own the land, but they're actually stewarding that land the right way or uh, in a more greener fashion. Uh, we also have uh, where we develop uh, kind of ideas where people can live over the market, you know, so there's a farm market on the properties or whatever, and then people live over that. But potentially the most interesting thing that's come up uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, a very close friend of mine, um, who was the uh, uh, chair of the architecture department here in Colorado, uh, called and said, hey, I've got a thing that might be really, really interesting. Uh, they had a farmer, we're, I don't, I don't want to make it sound pejorative in any way, but we are for-profit people. We believe if we're going to feed 9 million people on this, Earth that the farmer's going to make money at it, and that's the way we're going to attract folks. And this person called me and said, we've had a farmer who was kind of a volunteer, you know, urban garden kind of style person, but they can't keep up and it's bad all around, but I think your model will really work. So we said, oh sure, we'll jump in, and it was Denver Public Schools. So we are currently farming two separate sites. Two, uh, that's more uh, more than two acres together combined. But that went so well, even for half a season last year, that Colorado Health Foundation 
uh, is paying a, giving us a big grant to see if the school system can be self-feeding. So we're using satellite imagery and a variety of GIS and stuff, and we, we it's not by chance. I guess the thing that's, that I would tell you is that we've developed a whole way to measure and use agriculture like any other economic development tool or, or opportunity. So we actually count the calories. We have a big spreadsheet, and we go in and we say, what's the ground look like? And we do soil tests or whatever. But then we come up with a whole plan, and we know what the retail value and the wholesale value of the groceries and how much FTE it'll take and how much water it'll take or whatever. So we're like pre-planning the school district. And I don't know what it's like there, but here it's really very difficult. And again, I don't want to offend anybody, but they can't pay teachers enough, but they have 2,000 acres of ground. Huh. If Denver Public Schools and the real estate will look at 2,000 acres, and they it's a double whammy. They have to not only pay to mow it and spray with T4D and keep it weak, you know, and make it look nice and everything, but they don't, so they don't get any revenue. And we actually go in and say, let's farm it. You don't not only have to, all that maintenance cost goes away, but you get value for it. Sometimes in the neighborhood of thirty, forty thousand dollars an acre. You know, it depends on what we're growing. If we're growing tomatoes, you know, high dollar, high densely caloric kinds of foods for the kid. So that's that's how that started and that's on its way. We have three other school districts going now. Potentially and we started the job in Omaha in Omaha now that's related to that, but it's also through a nonprofit that's working to build the economy and, and create job training and a variety of things for the difficult uh, side of town in, in Omaha. So um, one of the things um, going to get I think the last kind of key to the situation, all of the economics of the new age of farming kind of as we see it are not all just, you know, I'm a farmer and I got an acre and I hope I sell my stuff, you know, on the market. And I hope we sell it, you know, hope I'm successful. We we first started with Denver Public Schools by saying, let's just farm and we'll rent the land from you and you buy the groceries from us. And it was just too expensive. I mean the school district, I mean this food is the highest quality food you can get. It's just it's remarkable. it's all custom I mean we take food like uh, you know it's an art form, and it's really, really good. So they couldn't afford to buy the food. It's better than whole, whole, whole foods quality food. And we said, well, there's just got to be a way that we can make money at this, and the school district can afford it, and the kids can get really, really good food. So it took about a year and a half, but we worked through. And so basically, the most management part of the district hires us. We have a mowing contract that we don't mow with, we actually farm for, but it's the template for what our contract is. And we make money at that. You know, we, we have less risk because we don't have to worry about, we're not the real farmer, we're the hired hand, but the school district owns the uh, produce that way, and the food buyer for the district buys the food from the, from the facility's management, so the, the money never leaves the school district. The kids get whole food quality food for the price of the USDA stipend. Hmm. Wow, that's total silence. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question.